All right, so now let's talk about bank reconciliations. Um, I said bank, but really it can be used for uh, checking accounts, savings accounts, loan accounts, credit cards. Uh, most accounts that you put into QuickBooks, you can reconcile. Um, so first would be how to get there. So again, like with everything in QuickBooks online, there's a few ways to get there. So one of the ways, if you hit the gear icon in the top right, under tools, you'll see reconcile. Um, another way is that if you're looking at your actual bank accounts, whether it's in your banking screen here or in your chart of accounts, um, you can reconcile from there. Or as well, if you go down here in the left panel under accounting, if you arrow over, you'll see reconcile there. So whatever makes most sense for your workflow to get there, there's multiple ways to get there. So once we're at this screen here, reconcile the account. Again, we can hit the hamburger, make this a little bit bigger. Um, one little tip here that I like to do so of course, if you have the, the paper statement, bank statement, whatever it is, um, physically with you with a highlighter or whatever to kind of check off the transactions, um, you can do that. Another option, what I like to do to keep everything paper free is that with this uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader, it's a free program to install. You don't have to pay for anything. But what I like this for is that if you go online and get your bank statement as a PDF, you can open it up using this program and it'll look like this. And then what I like to do is if you hit this arrow here, you can kind of um, make it a little bit bigger. I like to bring this over as much as I can. And then if you hit this little three dots right here in the options, you'll see highlight. So then what I like to do with that is when I'm going through and actually checking off the uh, transactions, and we'll see once we do a, um, some testing here, it'll actually highlight it just so it's a way to keep track of what I'm actually like, what I've reconciled and what I haven't, um, rather than having to actually print out the paper um, just to keep things paper free. So um, what we're essentially doing is just really checking these accounts to make sure that what you have in your QuickBooks matches what's physically um, coming in and out of your bank on the statement. And so, um, so what we can get started here, we can X out all this. So we're going to do this chase bank here. Um, if you need to see your histories, summaries of what you've actually reconciled up to this point, you can do that up here. But so we already reconciled once. So we have a beginning balance here. If you haven't done this yet to any of the accounts, this will of course be zero. And then what it's asking for next, we'll move this over so we can kind of see both a little bit. So ask for your ending balance of the uh, of the statement. So we're going to pretend this is January of this year, which is 2021. So you'll see this here in the statement, the ending balance. So in this particular case, it's negative 148. So we can put that here. And the ending date is just that. It's the um, statement ending date. So we're going to say this is January 31 of 2021. And then here, they just added this recently. It would give the option of uh, adding in any service or interest, um, whether this is a credit card or a bank statement, and you can do that here. So in this particular case, we do have that. So let's say end of this month or last month, we had a bank service charge of $1.48. You add this here as a positive, even though it's showing up in your statement as a, as a negative here, or I'm sorry. Right here, the 495, this is actually where we're going to be taken off. Then here you can choose the bank account, or I'm sorry, the expense account. So here would be bank charges. It makes the most sense there. We don't have any interest, so we can hit start reconciling. And sometimes if you're lucky, it'll uh, this will show right here a balance of zero. And if that's the case, you can just kind of double check everything, make sure that everything is reconciled and that there's no duplicates. And then you can... Um, uh, finish it from there and then you'll be all set if there is a difference here that's when you need to start doing some investigating and actually doing the double checking to make sure to find where the uh, the difference is coming from so just kind of navigation here to start so here's kind of your summary up here of what you're working with um, so again it'll show your ending balance your beginning balance how many payments how many deposits and then you can see whether or not you have a difference and where that could be coming from if you see a mistake here at this point in terms of beginning balance anything like that you can hit edit info and kind of change what we did before change the ending balance ending date service charges things like that so and it also too here if you if you're starting to reconcile and you want to um, 
kind of back out to make any changes or anything like that. You can hit save for later and it'll kind of save your progress. So you can jump right back in. But if everything looks decent up here, what you can do here, I like to get as much room as possible. So if you get this little arrow right here, it'll kind of bring it up. So you can still see the difference, but that's it. So you have more room to work with. If you hit this gear icon here, you can uh, either make it more compact or less. I like to have it regular. So again, you kind of have more real estate to work with. It makes it a little bit bigger. So you can do that here. And so now on this screen here, so sometimes it'll have them all um, by default checked as reconciled. So when these are checked like this, you're marking it as reconciled, unchecked, unreconciled. If you want to start from a blank slate, you can hit this arrow here and it'll unreconcile all of them. This is what we're going to do here. Let me kind of go through and see um, where we're getting this difference from. So what we can do is looking at our bank statement here, we can just start reconciling these off. So to begin, let's say this is January 4. We had a retail purchase at uh, Safeway for $8.99. So we can either sort these by date as they're sorted now, or I'll show you here in a second, we can sort them by payment. Um, but for now, we'll look at the date. So we'll see January 3, Safeway, 899. So we can check that and mark it as reconciled. Now, so one thing I wanna note here is that the dates don't always match perfectly. So this is something that would happen a lot. Let's say it's January 3rd is when the actual expense was inputted into QuickBooks but then it actually hits your bank on January 4th. Um, that's okay, it's still the same transaction. But what we can see here, and one thing I like to do when I'm reconciling, is I like to sort it by payment. So that way we can really quickly and easily check for duplicates. So, you know, a bunch of payments in the same uh, amount. So as of, so right here, for example, we see two back-to-back -back days, both for Safeway for $8.99. So that'd be kind of putting off some alerts of maybe um, a potential duplicate and we can check the bank account and see there's no other transactions for $8.99 so we can probably assume that this is a duplicate what may happen in this particular case is when the um, whether a receipt was uploaded or someone came in and put the expense in whenever the actual fuel was purchased from Safeway on January 3rd and then whenever it hit the actual bank feed in QuickBooks on the 4th someone might have also added it as Safeway fuel um, through the bank feed which would create this duplicate transaction one cool thing about this is if you want to if you see it here in your reconciliation screen that it is a duplicate you can actually edit it and delete it from this screen so you can click on the transaction hit edit hit more down here and then delete and now delete it without having to leave at all the reconciliation screen so let's keep going here we see another transaction on the 10th for 1171 we see that here January 10th, 1171. We can hit that as reconciled, highlight that to keep track of it on here. We got another one for $15. Sorry about that. We see that right here for the 20th. That looks good. Reconcile that. We see another one for $745 on the 21st. $745 for the 20th on here. That looks good. And then we see here that service charge we put in. So we can hit that as reconciled. And then here we're seeing that $0 difference, which is what we're looking for. So we can highlight that. And that finishes off the bank statement here. So these are all payments in this example, but you will see, of course, you know, deposits and a lot of them as well. Same process. Check to reconcile or not. And then, so we have a lot in this example, but... A lot of the times you may have two or three trans transactions that aren't reconciled, but um, that look good. So um, one, of, one of the things that it could be, so let's look right here, for example. So right here we have in our system, we wrote a check on January 28th for rent for that month for $750. So when you're looking at your P&L and stuff, this rent is showing in January as an expense. However, it was written on the 28th. And since the uh, Atlas Real Estate hasn't deposited the check yet and it actually hasn't came out of your bank account, uh, you'll keep this as unreconciled even though it's in January and it's a correct check that you wrote. Um, you'll keep it unreconciled because it actually hasn't cleared your bank account yet. So now that we have that $0 difference, we can hit finish and that'll finish off the reconciliation process.